Think piece number 17 of 23. Happy Halloween. We did this earlier at an open mic night, but I didn't hit record. So my name is Howard Campbell, and this is Anna Zanova, and she'll be playing Dr. Fink, and I'll be playing myself. This is an encore from my live album called Poker Without Cards. Okay, you lost me. We were talking about Foucault, and now we're talking about pirates. Dr. Fink, you think I am talking, which I am, but these aren't my ideas. I'm using Bucky's ideas to give you a fuller explanation. Bucky was interested in systems. In order to understand a system, you have to get outside the system to see other possibilities. Bucky felt oppressed because there aren't options to live outside the system. Pirates lived outside the system. The only laws that could and did rule them were natural laws. Pirates battled with one another to see who was going to control the vast sea routes and eventually the world. Their battles took place out of sight of land dwellers and the keepers of written history. The losers generally went to the bottom of the sea. Those who stayed on top of the waters and prospered did so because of their comprehensive abilities. They were the antithesis of specialists. Running a ship means knowing about navigation, weather, and managing people. Yes, pirates were applied scientists. The wider and more long distance their anticipatory strategy, the more successful they usually were. Experience proved that multiple ships could outmaneuver one ship, so pirates created navies. No, countries created navies. No, that's what our history tells us. But history is simply a story agreed upon. No, wait. Only countries had the infrastructure to build and sustain navies. Therein lies the rub. What? The rub, the catch, the cost of doing business. I'm not following. Pirates created countries. How do you figure? You think Western civilization just sprung up simultaneously along different coasts? People were trading via ship routes. Businessmen. Pirates. Pirates created foci of power. These powers expanded until they overlapped with other powers. Wars require immense resources. Boundaries emerge as a means to focus resources on their ports of trade. The pirates or businessmen were constantly demanding output. Defending takes less energy than attacking. Boundaries allow for the proper focus of energy. When one has excess resources, you can expand and attack. But I'm getting ahead of myself. To consistently sustain a navy, pirates had to control mines, forests, and lands to build the ships and establish the industries essential to building, supplying, and maintaining their navy. The pirates went to the various lands where they either acquired or sold goods and picked the strongest man there to be the pirate's local headman. The chosen man became the pirate's general manager of the local realm. If the chosen man in a given land had not already done so, the pirate told him to proclaim himself king. But this was a stooge to commerce. His sole job was to maintain order on behalf of the pirates. Order was most easily maintained by having the local king proclaim that he was the head man of all men, the God-ordained ruler on earth. The locals weren't traveling, so they saw no disparity. The pirates gave their stooge king secret lines of supplies that provided everything they needed to enforce their sovereign claim. The more massively bejeweled the king's gold crown, and the more visible his court and castle, the less visible was his pirate master. Masters had to sleep occasionally and therefore found it necessary to surround themselves with super loyal, muscular, but dumbass shit illiterates who couldn't see nor savvy their master's strategies. There was great safety in the stupidity of these henchmen. The great pirates realized that the only people who could possibly contrive to displace them were the truly bright people. Secrecy was the pirates' strongest defense. If the other powerful pirates didn't know where you were going, when you had gone, or when you were coming back, they wouldn't know how to waylay you. If anyone knew when you were coming home, small timers could come out in small boats and waylay you in the dark and take you over just before you got home tiredly after a two-year treasure harvesting voyage. Hijacking and second-rate piracy became a popular activity around the world's shores and harbors, so secrecy became the essence of the lives of the successful pirates. That's why so little is known of these pirates. The secrecy was at the heart of Bucky's obsessive search through literature. Bucky held that secret knowledge was real. Furthermore, Bucky sought it. A book like Buckminster Fuller's Operating Manual Spaceship Earth was named too peculiarly to be normal. After reading that book, he studied topology for four months. But back to Bucky's pirate story. 
These great pirates said to all their kings, statesmen who were functionally only lieutenants, Anytime bright young people show up, I'd like to know about it, because we need bright men. So each time the pirate came into port, the local king would mention that he had some bright young men whose capabilities and thinking shone out in the community. The great pirates would say to the king, All right, you summon them and deal with them as follows. As each young man is brought forward, you say to him, Young man, you are very bright. I'm going to assign you to a great history tutor, and in due course, if you study well and learn enough, I'm going to make you my royal historian. But you've got to pass many examinations given to you by me and your teacher. And when the next bright boy was brought before him, the king was to say, I'm going to make you my royal treasurer, and so forth. Then the pirate said to the king, You will finally say to all of them, But each of you must mind your own business, or off goes your heads. I'm the only one who minds everybody's business. And this is the way schools began, as royal tutorial schools. And it's the way specialization began. It is our current form of education. Academic education equals specialization. Exclusively, the great pirates retain comprehensive knowledge. Exclusively, the great pirates, known today as businessmen, enjoy knowledge of the world through its resources. Is this just a metaphor or some kind of syllogism? In his journal, Bucky emphasized that he was not being facetious. He meant that the pirate story to be taken literally. Bucky stressed that this was not a metaphor, but the way he saw where our current world order came from. This was the beginning of schools and colleges and the beginning of intellectual specialization. The development of the bright ones into specialists gave the king very great brain power and made him and his kingdom the most powerful in the land and therefore secretly and greatly advantaged his patron pirate in world competition with the other great pirates. The power rested not with the powerful figureheads, the kings, but with the men behind the kings, the great pirates. Just as today, a corporate president may be the king, but the power is in the hands of the board of directors. Thank you for your considerations.